Whenever you become a believer, you also become God's messenger so He can speak to the world through you. You may think you do not have much to say, but this just isn't true. God has given each of us storehouses of experience that He wants to use to draw others near. This is called Our Life's Message. Today, Rick Warren writes about the four different parts of Our Life's Message. The first part of Our Life's Message is our testimony. Our testimony is the story of how Christ has made a difference in our lives. Jesus told His disciples in Acts 1, 8, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. A witness is someone who shares their personal experiences in front of others. But witnessing about Jesus in our lives to others, we build a relational bridge that Jesus can walk through to another person's heart. The second part of our life's message is the lessons we have learned. God teaches various lessons through our experiences with Him. These lessons are insights we learn about God and relationships, problems, temptations, and other aspects of life. Ask yourself questions like, what has God taught me from failure or disappointment in the past? We can also learn lessons about God from the lives of others. Scriptures like Proverbs are filled with lessons Solomon learned from God and passed to us. Reading and internalizing them will help us in our walk with Christ. The third part of our message is our godly passions. God gives us all different passions. Some champion a cause like abuse or depression, and others feel strongly about building churches or reaching teenagers. Whatever passion God gives us, He gives so that we can go and share the message of the gospel to those in need. The final and most important part of our message includes the good news. And the good news is that God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. It is when we trust God's grace to save us, through what Jesus did, our sins are forgiven. We get a purpose for living, and we're promised a future in heaven. There are lots of ways to share the good news, but no technique will substitute for the motivation of love. Our motivation is summed up in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Remember this, God wants to share the gospel through you. Think about 1 Peter 3, 15, which says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Ask yourself this, what am I willing to do so that the people I know can know Jesus? Mm -hmm.